Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will show you how to use Wealth Simple Tax to prepare your tax return for free. I've made another video using UFile online. If you are interested, you can take a look to see which software you prefer. I always start by reviewing my notice of assessment from the previous year to see if I have any carry forward amounts. For example, LRSP contribution limit and unused tuition amounts. In addition to T4, T3, T5, you may also have receipts for medical expenses, donations, or child care expenses. The first home savings account, FHSA, is a new registered plan to help first time home buyers save for their first home. Your FHSA issuer will give you a T4 FHSA slip. Please keep all of your supporting documents for at least six years. Well, the simple tax has different versions. The basic version is free. They call this the pay what you want version, but you can enter zero to use this for free. The first step is to log into Wealth Simple Tax. If you don't have an account, you will have to create a new account. After you log in, you can create a new file for the 2023 tax year. I already created a file, so I'm just going to open the 2023 file. You just have to go through the questions one by one in order to prepare your tax return. First, you need to enter your personal information. The net file access code is an 8-character code located on your notice of assessment for the previous tax year. It is intended to be used as an extra level of security. If this is the first time you file your tax return, you don't have to enter this. This field is optional. Next, enter your mailing address and phone number and confirm whether you have a non-Canadian mailing address. The next question is, were you a Canadian resident for all of 2023? I'm going to choose yes here. If you choose no, there will be another question. Did you become a resident of Canada immigrate for income tax purposes in 2023? This question is related to residency status for income tax purposes. Generally, a newcomer becomes a resident of Canada for income tax purposes when they establish significant residential ties in Canada. If you become a resident of Canada for income tax purposes in 2023, you need to provide additional information such as your date of entry, and your income earned it while you were a non-resident. The income earned as a non-resident before moving to Canada is non-taxable, except for income you received it from Canadian source. Income earned as a non-resident is required to calculate certain benefits and credits. If you're not sure about your residency status for income tax purposes, I would recommend you to consult with a professional. Then enter your province or territory of residence on December 31st, 2023. If your province or territory of residence has changed it in 2023, you have to enter the date of your move. Confirm whether your home address is the same as your mailing address and specify which province or territory you currently live in. Next, enter your marital status and whether you want to prepare your tax returns together if you have a spouse or common law partner. Whether your marital status has changed it in 2023 and whether you have any dependents. There are benefits for preparing your tax return and your spouse or common law partner's tax return together. 
as it would be easier to optimize the tax credit. Next, answer some CRA questions. Answer all the questions and scroll down. For the question, did you own or hold specified foreign property where the total cost amount of all such property at any time in the year was more than 100,000 Canadian dollars in 2023? If the answer to this question is yes or you're not sure, I wouldn't recommend doing your tax return yourself, especially if this is the first time you are doing your tax return yourself. This is because the rules for foreign property T1135 reporting are very complex. There are some new questions this year, including did you flip a property in 2023? And did you open a first home savings account, FHSA, in 2023? Answer all the questions in this session and scroll to the next session. For the Canada Carbon Rebate, formerly known as the Climate Action Incentive Payment, we have to specify the area that we live in. For the email notifications from the CRA, choose whether you prefer to receive your notifications and documents electronically. For the CRA Autofill My Return, if you have a CRA My Account, this optional function allows you to download the information that the CRA has available so that you don't have to enter all the information manually. If you are using this function, it is still important to check the information with your supporting documents just to make sure that all the information is downloaded properly and completely. Next, I'm going to go to the spouse or common law partner session and answer the questions. After we enter the basic information, now it is time to enter the information based on your tax slips and supporting documents. To find and add tax forms, deductions or credits, you can go to manage your tax forms and type the name in the search box. Alternatively, you can use the navigation panel on the left to go to the tax form if you have already set it up. Let's add the T4. You will need to enter all the information as per your T4 tax slip, such as employer's name, employment income, province or territory of employment, your CPP contributions, your EI contributions, income tax deducted, etc. Once you are done entering all the information, double check the information just to make sure that you enter everything accurately. If you have more than one T4, you can click add another T4. Next, we'll add a T5. Enter the information here as per your T5 tax slip. For this example, I'm going to assume I earned interest income. Interest income is reported in box 13. If this is a joint account, you have to put in the percentage that you're entitled to. If you have more than one T5, click at another T5. Next, we'll look at donations. Choose the recipient, enter a description and the donation amount. If you have any unused donations that were carried forward from prior years, you can enter it here as well. If you don't need any capital or depreciable property in 2023, you can specify it here as well. Next, we'll enter the RRSP information. For the RRSP, you have to enter your deduction limit for 2023. You can find this information on your 2022 Notice of Assessment. I'm just going to assume that my deduction limit was $2,000 and the contribution that I made in 2023 was also $2,000. Choose the type of the RRSP contribution 
enter a description and the amount. You can choose whether to use all of your RRSP deduction in 2023 or save all or some to future years. For this example, I'm going to use all the deductions in 2023. Next, we'll look at home office expenses. Assume I worked from home in 2023 and assume I met the CRA criteria for using the detailed method to claim home office expenses. Choose the option that is relevant for you. For this example, I'm going to choose salaried employee. Remember, you need supporting documents and a signed T2200 from your employer in order to use the detailed method. You do not have to submit form T2200 with your tax return. However, the CRA may ask to see it later. Enter all the relevant information. Some examples of eligible expenses including rent, electricity, heat, utilities, and home internet access fees. To calculate the percentage of workspace in the home expenses, you can deduct. Use a reasonable basis, such as the area of the workspace divided by the total finished area. If you don't know how to do this calculation, you can refer to the CRA website for details. Next, we'll look at medical expenses. To qualify for the medical expenses tax credit, generally, your medical expenses must be more than the lesser of 3% of your 2023 net income, or $2,635. In the medical expenses session, specify the person who incurred the expenses. Enter a description, choose the type of expenses, and enter the amount of expense. If you have more than one expense, click Add Another Expense. If you have a spouse or common law partner and you would like to prepare your returns together, you can enter their information. The information are basically the same, such as identification, address, CRA questions, etc. Let's look at tuition. Enter the information based on your T2202. You can find your calendar training credit on your previous year's notice of assessment and in your CRA My Account. Once you have entered all the tax slips and information, click Review and Optimize to see if there are any warnings or suggestions that we need to address. The software optimizes the tax credits for you. If you'd like to override some of the allocations of the tax credit, you can manually adjust the numbers in the optimizations session. We fill the information to ensure everything has been entered correctly. Based on the information entered, the software calculates the refund or balance owing. Click Save PDF to save a copy of the return for your records. When you're ready to file your tax return, click Submit Tax Return. You will have to do this separately for each of the individuals who need to file a return. You'll get a confirmation number from the CRA. Please keep this for your record. Thank you so much for watching.